Hello, hello, hello. This is Tony Mike Gravel. I'm coming to you from Chicago as usual. I got a bunch of stuff. I got a bunch of stuff. It, honestly, a lot of it's left over from yesterday. I intended to do another stream. But I might have gotten bitten by the nap monster. <laughs> but I've got some stuff from today. The usual suspects. April, of course. Kristen. Rocky. A whole bunch of people sent me a regear clip. I had to do it. I had to do it. That's fresh. That's fresh off the presses. He's got steam coming out of his ears. The whole deal. Let's do it, shall we? Um, but allegedly, Judge, she and, and, and the complaining witness got into, you know, a little tuffle, tiffle. And, you know, as as <laughs> Mr. Glenn was walking out, allegedly, my client took a shot, uh, which, you know, Miss Mr. Glenn wasn't trying to shoot at Mr. Glenn, but but shot into the wall. Hello, Jimenez. Yolo. <laughs> Brace yourselves. Good morning. Hello. Cited for unregistered vehicle and obscure license plate. How do you plead? I'm just here for the bill. I'm not going to answer that question. Just charge me for whatever it is. All right. So you got to answer that question. I have to? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to answer it. I'm just here for the bill and that's it. Okay. So if you don't answer it, then I have to enter a not guilty and set you for trial. All right. It's All right. Choice. So he's refusing to, to plea. So we'll, I will set for a trial on a not guilty plea. If you miss the trial, we'll add more money. All right. The fine. Uh, so we're going to set trial for September 27th. The trial is at 1.30. And I've got the note for you here. All right. I don't miss that trial. All right. Well, can I get like a a thing because uh, your security guard made a, a, a hazard it just because I was wearing my hats and I told him about my first submitment and some security guard said, oh, no, well, he's a manager. And then the other guy came and said, no, just go ahead and go through. I had an issue with your security guards. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's something. The judge should just hold him in contempt right now and say, <laughs> Yeah, he was trying to save you from this, but but she's she's too nice for that. You were report to the executive office. Well, I asked him, and he he said himself that he was the one, but he was, the manager. Yeah, he, he was lying. I I knew he was lying. So then the other guy comes out and said, "Oh, no, you could go ahead and come, but it's for many reasons." And I was like, "Dude, I told him already. Like, I was having an issue with your guys' people outside." Okay. Yeah, so I well, think they need to be a little bit more educated or put signs of. You know, when you have the hat, you should have, for religion's purpose or the First Amendment rights, you know, have them already knowing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's got his religious backwards baseball hat on. <laughs> okay. So they can know, you know, like that they don't question you or why you have a hat. So, okay. All right, then, so I have court September 27th okay, at one thirty. And I'll just tell you, these were made correctable. And I, I, I get it. I understand. So that. if you got, if you get them correctable before the court date, I have my registration. It was paid and shit. Like it was paid and everything. And I had a cover. I think you have it there. Yeah. I had a cover, a cover plate. I removed it. I have a picture on my phone. So it's up to you. I mean, that's twenty five dollars each. If you want to, it's like a, I'm not trying to be rude or disrespectful. You know, I'm not trying to answer that. I'm, I could give you the evidence, but I'm not going to answer that question. If you don't. Okay. So you know, way you can take it to trial. I'm still going to not answer the question. I'm just going to provide what it needs to be provided. Okay, I got you. Okay. 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 So then the imposition is right, do you? Why are you have that? Okay, indulge me. It's short. But you know I love Gujarati, and the judge is so deliciously condescending and dismissive. Just remember, there's, there'll be no cutting of trees. Done it without we any cut it and dump it. We're not removing it. No, 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 no. Why is the question of not only that I'm not removing it? How did you cut the uh, trees? How did you cut the trees without permission? We have not cut trees. There are some feelings there. 
Some, Maybe you some, say that, some tree is there. No, are you saying that there is no tree? So then in that regard, in Patta number 12, there shall not be any cutting of trees. <laughs> Don't cut any trees. I'll pass the order. To them. No cutting of trees, no felling of trees no, in Patta number 12. That should be verified by them. No, no cutting <laughs> of trees. Then the imposition is right. Yeah. No cutting of trees. You have, why did you? Watch how he cuts off the end of the hearing. It's fantastic. Cut without permission. It is a high root trees, my jungle tree. Then the imposition is right in his hand. Because your petitions, whoever has drafted it, they don't know how to draft it, draft the petition properly. How have you done? See the prayers, what you have done it, Mr. Shah. First of all, no cutting of a tree. Second of all, you don't know how to draft a petition. <laughs> Keep the of the hey, is this the petition in which you have done it? Please, the matter before any other event. I'm cancelling this order. Please, the matter before any other event. Let anybody else. Not going to pass. No. This is not a case where I'm going to. I don't mind. Okay, that be a no. So the guy, the guy tr tries to start talking, and he puts his hand out. I, I guess that indicates the hearing's over because he because he stopped mid sentence, and it's like you, you got to go, you got to go now. I put I put the hand out. <laughs> Here, people versus Wilson or Wagner. Is Ms. Wilson in jail? Okay, is she there? Or would you rather do Wagner first? Well, okay. People. Okay, so Kristen sent this to me. I get a little background. Uh, apparently, Judge Power is coming out of retirement because they just need him for a, a little bit or whatever. I mean, that guy was on the bench when I lived there 700 years ago. But it's just funny. He, he wants no part of this. <laughs> Versus Carl Wilson, 19-13248. Your Honor. Yes. We'll have to get uh, Ms. Wilson into the interview room if that's who you wish to do first. Okay, that's what I was trying I, to figure out. All I see is people. I don't know who all of them are. Um, I'm is, Mr. Wag is Mr. Wagner that here? I'm right here, right. Your Honor. All right, we'll go to Wagner then. Thank you, Your Honor. And that is file number 23-14568. See, Mr. Atwood is here for the prosecution. Ms. Claxton for the defendant. I'm looking at a warrant that was issued for Mr. Wagner's arrest that alleges uh, August 6th, he tested, had positive test results. I'm not exactly sure. Let's see here what that. Amphetamine and marijuana, it says. So, uh, is that true, Ms. Claxon? Your Honor, that is the allegation in the bench warrant. And speaking with Mr. Wagner regarding the allegations and his rights, he wishes to plead not guilty and have this set for a hearing with his attorney. Well, that's kind of what we're here for. And Judge, I'm just the arraignment attorney today. His underlying attorney is Mr. Johnson. Well, okay. So he would stay in jail pending that. <sighs> <laughs> the judge is asking. Uh, well, that's that's kind of that's kind of your call, Judge. <laughs> He's like, I don't need this. I just want to go play another round of golf. If the court is inclined to give him a bond, uh, we just ask that that be said as soon as possible. I'm broke. I'm trying to go out and work. Well, Miss Atwood. Uh is this a one-time only event or has he done this before 
Well, Your Honor, there are two positive tests uh, here. The first one was collected on August 6th, um, and that was, I believe, the test that the court had referenced for uh, positive readings on amphetamines and THC. Um, also importantly, that, that test was extremely dilute as well. Um, when we have a positive screen along with a, a very dilute sample, uh, you usually indicate somebody's using, they know they've been using, and they're, they're trying to violate or trying to, uh, to, to pass the test. And then we had a follow-up positive test again on August 19th, uh, also again positive for amphetamines and THC. Um, so I, to me, I, I think that there was information that the defendant may have a medical marijuana card, uh, but uh, certainly there's no explanation for the amphetamines. Um, there also have been um, prior issues uh, on bond. Um, looks like there was a failure to appear in a district court case as well. Uh, apparently, the defendant at least told somebody at that point that he had an emotional breakdown. Um, and so I guess given that and the positive test and the dilute sample, I'm I'm concerned that if we let him out and he's in a state of desperation, that we're going to have a repeat uh, or worse. Thank you, Judge. Well, according to the uh, felony information, it says that the defendant previously was convicted of possession of fentanyl and of drug driving third offense, according to the habitual offender notice. What do you think, Ms. Uh, Claxon? Any comment, Ms. Claxon? Uh, Your Honor, I, I understand where the court's coming from. Like I said, if the court isn't willing to give them a bond, we would just ask um, that this gets set as soon as possible. Um, he did inform me that he does have a medical marijuana card, and so I think that that um, suffices for the, the THC portion of it. Uh, it sounds like he does have some mental health issues. He would be seeking mental health treatment as well as working should the court let him out. I promise I'm not doing meth. <sighs> Judge, he promised. Oh, and Your Honor, it does look like he had uh, dilute and positive screens back in June as well. I didn't see that initially. Well, dilute screens, and of course, why does one have a medical marijuana card when recreational marijuana is freely available uh, and legally so? Anyway, I think what we'll do is hold the defendant without bond, and if defense counsel feels there's some need to review bond, I'm sure sure uh, he'll file an appropriate motion. So we'll be held without bond. Judge is like, I, I don't want to think about this. How about, how about we just hold him without bond? I, I, I'm, uh, I'm not believing anything that's coming out of him. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> I can't win. Thank you. Okay, the next is, uh, see, is Ms. Wilson here? People versus Officer, Wilson. Sir, we is. need Ms. Wilson, please. Mr. Wagner, we're finished. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, a dilute sample, I, I, th that's not my area, but a dilute sample is a strong indicator of somebody trying to, uh, to, to cheat on the test. Would you please send Mr. Wilson in, or Ms. Wilson, excuse me? Don't you guys understand when a man's being set up? Can't believe you guys. I didn't do a damn thing wrong. Nothing. They want Ms. Wilson. Boy, I'm just getting railroaded here. Morning. What's your name? Luana Glenn. Luana, Luana Glenn. Calling case 230-585-8701. People of the state of Michigan versus Luana Tish Glenn. Defendants charged with count one, weapons, firearm, discharge, in or at a building. Count two, weapons, firearm, possession by a felon. Count three, assault with a dangerous weapon, felonious assault. Count four, five, and six, weapons, felony, firearm. Count seven, domestic violence. The defendant is labeled as an eventual offender, second offense notice. Today is the date and time for a line redetermination hearing. 
Thanks, Judge. Good morning. Steve Vincent for the People, P71917. Your Honor, Philip Reagan on behalf of Ms. Glenn, who's appearing via Zoom uh, from the Wayne County Jail. Um, um, what is the, what's Ms. Glenn's bond? 25000 flat cash, Your Honor. Okay. Argument. Judge, this is... Uh, this is, you know, a, you know, a domestic situation, Judge, between I, I believe couples um, that that allegedly got out of hand, Judge, allegedly got way out of hand. Um, you know, my client's fifty. Yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll agree with you so far. Three. Uh, I don't I don't believe she has any assaultive assaultive uh, history. Um, you know, she's uh, not working, Judge. Um, but allegedly, Judge, she and, and, and the complaining witness got into, you know, a little tuffle, tiffle. And, you know, as as <clears throat> Mr. Glenn was walking out, allegedly, my client took a shot, uh, which, you know, missed Mr. Glenn, wasn't trying to shoot at Mr. Glenn, but but shot. That's a fantastic defense. Yeah, my client, my, my client discharged a firearm, but they missed. <laughs> got into the wall. You know, um, and and you know there there was some 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 physicality between the two, um, according to my client. You know she got she got roughed up a little bit, um, but she was in no way, shape, or form going to shoot Mr. Glenn. She could have shot Mr. Glenn, but she did not shoot Mr. Glenn, Judge. And I think if anything, and I'm not saying this is what it was, but anything, if anything, it could have been seen as a warning shot because I'm shooting away. But the problem with this whole situation, Judge, is that anytime we discharge a gun, whether we're, you know, warning or doing, it's reckless. It's just reckless. That's not what guns are meant to do. We're not, you know, it's not not what we do. Now, I understand when when things get heated and, and people get into arguments. I, I, I get that. But <laughs> you're never, ever, ever supposed to shoot a gun. You know, and and I'm not saying that that this is what happened per se, because I don't want to. I'm not going to be her lawyer. She's going to be able to pro to provide a defense later on. But from the looks of it, uh, you know, it was more of a a a a a scare, and it was more reckless than anything, Judge. So I'm asking the court to consider reducing the bonds to twenty five thousand personal. She does have a prior uttering and publishing, Judge, from two thousand six. That's her only conviction that I see. So I'm asking the court. To, con to consider no contact whatsoever, no contact, mm -hmm. uh, and a, a personal bond with GPS Teleron. Mr. Prosecutor. Thanks, Judge. I think it's ironic defense counsel used the phrase, get way out of hand, because that's <clears throat> exactly what happened. A gun in hand, the defendant ended up firing, not at a wall. I mean, just reading the investigator's report, which we all have, it says that uh, the defendant shot at the front door in the same direction that the def or the complainant was leaving from. Now, Your Honor, I do agree with defense counsel. This was very reckless, and we do believe that the defendant poses a substantial danger. What wasn't in the investigator's report is the fact that there were um, complainant's kids in the house at the time of this shooting, Judge. Um, the, the firing uh, allegedly happened in his direction. Um, I don't know if there's any clear danger than to discharge a weapon in the direction of an individual. You know, fortunately, nobody got hurt, but this could have gone a completely different way here. So with that being said, we do feel as though uh, this defendant does pose a danger. We do feel as though, Judge, respectfully, that the cash bond is appropriate. And, and, and Brother Counsel is right, Judge. It could have gone a different direction. Thank God it did not. Um, there was one shot allegedly fired, wasn't multiple shots fired, as, as as someone would really try to do if they were intentionally trying to hurt somebody. I think, Judge, if anything, I don't know about kids being in the house because I don't have any of that information, but, Judge, I can say it was reckless. It was very reckless to do something like that, even out of anger. Um, but I think that Ms. Glenn may be a threat uh, to Mr. Mr. Glenn, you know, husband, and wife, but if they're not together and they're apart from each other, They've been married, uh, you know, some years, Judge, and and you know, regardless of 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 of, of that, I'm asking the court to to consider uh, the reduction, Judge, to the personal with the tether, 
no contact, no contact whatsoever. I don't know if Mr. Glenn's going to show up at the exam or not, but regardless, right now, no contact, Judge. We haven't heard the arguments of counsel. Um, court fines are $25,000 cash bonds and unaffordable bond. Or to, or to give an unaffordable bond, the court has to make a determination that, that there's either flight risk or danger to the community or, or an extra danger to the complaining witness. Um, this is a case where, you know, I, I say it often, this is why um, there are uh, just too many guns. Um, one, um, the uh, defendant has kind of, for she's forfeited her right to possess a gun, having a, having a felony. Um, but even if she didn't have a felony, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, if there wasn't a gun present, you know, they could have just had their argument and, you know, she's hitting her with a cane and he's hitting her with a broomstick. And this is all ridiculous and stupid. And they're in their 50s fighting with with with, with wooden objects. And, and it's just but th that would be a misdemeanor or, or that would be not in front of me with a $25,000 cash bond and possible killing someone or some innocent bystander outside or some kid or I accidentally shot him in the back when I was just trying to scare him, you know, and I didn't mean to kill him. You know, this is why we need to stop all of this. We need to stop it. We need, we need to kind of learn how to have some better, you know, you know, dispute resolution than 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 canes and brooms and and rugers and you know AR-15s or whatever, you know, 22 caliber pistols, whatever. And uh, this this needs to stop. With that all being said, bonds being reduced to twenty five thousand personal with a GPS tether, no contact, house arrest. Uh, can only leave for court and medical appointments only. Thank you, Judge. Thanks, Judge. Yeah. Oh, man, I got to get together. Yes, I don't know why this person is. Um, hello? What is... Oh, she's not connected to audio. Can you um, connect to audio? Can you hold up your side face for me? Oh, yeah. Okay. Wait, she is um, connecting to audio. Mr. Bobaugh, you're killing Tasha's ears. Sorry, Thank you. Sorry, time. See, it doesn't matter. You're going to get yelled at. I don't want to. <laughs> okay. Ms. Azar, can you please unmute? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, where are you located? What town? I'm in Grosio, my mother's house. The one I might hate to be. Okay, so why are you on Zoom and not in person? I was told that this was a Zoom meeting. Who told you that? When I, I got released, I asked who how I would be able to find my the date to come here, and they said that I'll get something in the mail, and it's a Zoom meeting. Did you get something in the mail? No, not yet, and I've been checking. Can you can you hear me on your file, please? Azar, A Z A R. Because man, it's in person. So I don't know who told you it was on Zoom. It's in person. So, and you need to um, be dressed a bit more appropriately than uh, team Yeah, shirt I couldn't find the ID number. I'm so sorry. It's I'm just not found it. Um, is there any way that I can show up there in like half of an hour? Yes, there it is. We'll be here. Okay. So just one moment. Let me just okay, explain to you, ma'am. Hold on, ma'am. Hold on. You received this paperwork called pre-trial release order when you were released, correct? Yes. Did you read it? Yeah, my mom has all my paperwork right now, though. No, ma'am. No. I didn't ask who has it. I asked if you read the paperwork. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, all it says was that my next court yes. didn't say whether it was in person or on Zoom. Ma'am, it says your purpose of next appearance, pre-trial. 
Time of appearance, 9 a.m. Date of appearance, August 29, 2023. Place of appearance at the court address above. That is the box that's checked. Don't you hate it when the judge can read? I thought it meant that's where the case is like being located as in that's where you are. What? The case like, is located, located here, here man. Yes, you need, you need to be here in person. So make your way here. Okay. Okay. City Wyandotte versus Natasha is our 232004. Attorney Corey Westmoreland, appearing on behalf of Ms. Lazar. Natasha, you heard? Okay, and I'm sorry, just one moment, Mr. Goldhawk. And yep. um, Mr. Carson, um, are we having a hearing or not? Uh, let me speak with her. Okay, because I've had um, the toxicologist, the DNA individual on here for quite a while. I understand you. I, as I said, I'm out there. I didn't know he'd commit. I apologize. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, All right, I'm sorry, your name, please? Natasha Azar. All right, thank you for putting your more appropriate top on. And so, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for missing my appointments. I have a real appointment after this. I'm sorry if you guys want to see me. Yes, okay. All right, counsel, ask the free trial. Yes, Your Honor, I was able to uh, free trial this matter at the time of the plan is to hear pleas on ordering where drugs are illegally kept and the possession of drug paraphernalia is going to be dismissed. Um, for, from the testimony, that's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. All right. And you heard the plea that your attorney placed on the record, correct? Yes. And as to how one, order your drugs are kept, these are stored, how do you plead? Guilty. Um, You've gone over your advice advice with your attorney, correct? Yes. And as to that document, you read and understood each of those rights prior to signing it, correct? Yes, sir. You also understand by entering into plea, you'll be waiving some of those rights, specifically your trial and appellate rights. Yes. You also understand the possible penalty as a result of your plea, whether in this matter, in this court, any other court, or administrative agency. Yes, sir. And knowing all that, you still want to continue with your plea. Yes. Has anybody promised you anything, threatened you, or coerced you in any way for you to enter into a plea? No. Counselor, you can please pardon your client. Sure. This is our were you in the city of Wyandotte on August 18th of this year? Yes. On that date and time, were you stopped by police for jaywalking? Yes. Uh, did you have a crack pipe on your person? Yes. And you know that that would simply be what happened? Yes. Satisfied your honor. The court is also satisfied with you as knowing voluntary and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea. To count one, just going to count two for the plea agreement. And we'll schedule this matter for sentencing. September 28th. Would that be in person, Your Honor? Yes. Very good. At 9 a.m. Ma'am, if uh, you, and I'm sorry, you've been te you've been testing, correct? Today's been my first day. It was the earliest availability that they had. What? The earliest availability? You should be calling every day to get. Well, I have a, I have a group of people that live here at 8 a.m. that I can text to all the time. But they're going to get scheduled with everything else today. You're going to need to stop in a probation. Um, that's it's not You were supposed to do uh, their testing date. You were, you, you were supposed to have stopped in probation on August 18th. Did you do that? No, I didn't know I was supposed to. Ma'am, when you were arraigned on August 18th, I indicated that so I, put, I you had to post a five thousand dollar ten percent bond. You had to participate in random testing because you weren't using any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. How did you think you're going to get set up for that random testing? 
I thought I was going to get everything in the mail. No. That's why I indicated. And I know I indicated that because I wrote it on here. Defendant to stop the probation to set up random testing. Girl, 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 girl. Girl, girl, girl. Girl, girl, girl. Don't do that. Just, I'm mute you, Miss Jones. All right, now, no more girl, Miss Barnett. Now you tell me. And then you walked on out. Yeah, I thought I was going to get them when I started that in the mail, as well as my Zoom appointment. I'll ensure, Your Honor, that she stops in the probation thing, so I'll say that. Ma'am, if you're tested today, what's in your system? Weed and possibly coke. Right. I can tell because you can't even sit still. You can't even stand still. <coughs> When's the last time you used either one of them? <coughs> Are you going to tell me you don't recall this court telling you you're not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed? I, mean, I thought I was going to get everything known when I started. Wait, what? I thought I was going to get everything with the dropping and everything in the mail. Yeah. Do you recall me telling you you were not allowed to use any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed? What's that? Uh, no, I thought that was going to start the day the dropping started. No, ma'am. No. That started that day. When you were released from jail, you were not to use any of those substances. I'm not prescribed. And I'm going to presume you don't have a prescription for Coke and you don't have one for marijuana either. No. <coughs> and had you read the document, ma'am, your pre-trial release. It also indicates on there that you're not to use any alcohol, marijuana, or illegal controlled substances. Did you read that? Mm -hmm. I just read it to see what my work date was. Yeah, the document's two and a half pages. You didn't read any of that. We don't just want to waste paper and ink. It's a purpose for you to review it and follow the court's orders. Why should I not revoke your bond right now? And you can sit in jail until your next court date. I really didn't know. I'm trying to get everything I'm going to try. I started on the research rehab today. You're going to be starting what? I'm going to be starting rehab today. Rehab? Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes. Where is that? Hero. Oh, in Taylor. Okay, so it's not inpatient. No. Mm -hmm. It's outpatient. Yes, I'm also going to be able to get my management license because I, my mom just bought a food truck and then get work. When's the last time you worked? Uh, two years ago, a year ago. Why haven't you worked in a year? I don't really have an excuse. Council, why should I not um, revoke your client's bond at this point? Your Honor, she, she does have a very strong family support. Her mother's in the courtroom here today. Uh, she did indicate to me that she is uh, going to be in outpatient rehab. Uh, she's either going to be working full time here in the near future or enrolling in school. Uh, she did graduate high school two years ago, and uh, she wants to enroll herself into uh, college courses. I think this was just a simple misunderstanding of the part. It's not going to be an issue. She did appear here today. She did a determination for the appearing on the future court dates. How is, why did you say that you're testing today? Because that was the first available time that you could get an appointment. What, where's that at, testing? Oh, we have to my turn to test. I'm going to tell you, ma'am. Okay. 
I told you, and it was written in your documentation that you chose not to read. I thought everything's going to be sent in now from everything started. So you thought you could just use whatever substances you wanted to use until the first time you were testing? That doesn't even make any sense. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to indicate that you're going to, I'm going to revoke your bond. No, ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am, I don't have to identify for the record. It was a genuine mistake, ma'am. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't a genuine mistake. I verbally told you on the record, it's written in your documents that you chose not to read. You had much notice that you're not allowed to use that. First of all, it's a condition of bond. Second of all, it's illegal for you to use cocaine anyway. But you violated this court's order. Your Honor, I, I would simply just be asking for some leniency here. She was open and honest with you and said the line she, she told you. The truth. <clears throat> Hopefully it's not going to happen. It won't. Well, I'm glad that she told me the truth because actually I was going to find out anyway that she would have been tested right here in the courtroom, in the courthouse. We're going to revoke your bond. We're going to amend the sentencing date to be September 11th. So it's not all the way to the end of September. Somebody will, somebody will interview you back in the jail. Yes, ma'am. I didn't understand. I'm sorry. I'm in a plan to contract. I promise. I'm re-enrolling in college. I'm starting a job. If your mom is the one that read you the court date, you're telling me she didn't read you all the other conditions? I just throw up. <laughs> and I thought, since I didn't get anything in a mail yet, and I started to up today, there were one last chance to get it off my system. And I know that that was wrong. It was. It was. I really want to explain it again. Ma'am, for your own safety, for your own safety, the court's going to revoke your bond. In addition to violating this court's order. If I started an inpatient rehab today, would that change that? Ma'am, I'm not bartering with you. If you wanted inpatient rehab, you certainly could have participated before right now. You're all, you want inpatient rehab, so you're not going to jail. I do want to get better. That's not entirely true. Okay, then I will have you tethered to inpatient treatment through the Wayne County Jail. There you go. Works for everybody. So you can still get your inpatient treatment. All right, they're going out the store. Thank you. Somebody will be back there to interview you regarding your um, sentencing. No, ma'am. No, ma'am, you're going this way. You're going this way. You want the inpatient treatment? We're doing that for you. Ma'am, ma'am, you're going, you're going to get your inpatient treatment. We're going to go off the record for a moment. The wheels of justice are going to roll you right into the Wayne County Jail. We're on the record in 2022, TR 2146, State of Kansas versus James Bala. Am I pronouncing that right? Yes, Your Honor, Bala. Bala? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Jared Regeer for the state, Mr. Bala in person. And pro se, this matter was set at the defendant's request. He oh, Regeer is so Regeer in this one. He originally was charged <laughs> For 97 miles per hour and a 75, he set the matter for hearing for February 22nd of 2023, but failed to appear 
I understand, Mr. Bala, that you were deployed at the time in, in the military. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, somehow the matter went to collections, even though you hadn't been found guilty. Is that part correct also? Yes, Your Honor. And so you've asked to appear today. Are you wanting to have that removed from collections and have the matter set for trial? Yes, Your Honor. If that, if that would be very much, uh, I would appreciate that so much, Your Honor. Okay, so this guy, this guy got a ticket. He ended up missing a date or something because he was deployed. <clears throat> uh, clearly, Judge Webster has a soft spot for veterans. So do I. I totally understand. I'll tell you who doesn't. Okay, Mr. Regeer, any? <laughs> Uh, Your Honor, I have something to say. Okay, before Mr. Regeer answers, then go ahead, please. Okay, so when I was on deployment, I had this uh, mail sent out to my house. So my wife called me, and at the time I was already in, well, I can't really call the place name for some, uh, for some security reasons. So I was able to make a phone call, but every time I make a phone call, I was using pay phone to call the court. So the lady told me there's no way they can retrieve it they, from the collections. They only can make a court date for me. I was like, okay, uh, that would be good so I can be able to talk to the judge due to the fact that my current location and the reason why I'm here. So... Uh, she said, okay, but then nobody sent me an email. She said they're going to send me an email before the date of the, the court date. Nobody sent me an email. Even this one that I'm on right now, nobody sent me an email. I had to call the clerk office uh, like 15 minutes ago before she could give me the case ID number and the password to log on to Zoom or else I was going to miss it out because I've been checking my email since yesterday because I know today. So some type of miscommunication somewhere and uh, that's the reason why i missed the first court day even though i was on a, i was on diploma i was willing to uh, appear to court on zoom to explain to the judge uh, whoever the judge was at the time to tell him or her that hey uh i'm sorry i can't be in person but this is my situation i just need to make a payment because i even agreed to make payments but the lady said, no, we can't take no payments anymore. I told her, like, ma'am, I'm on deployment. Can you please okay. help me? I think like, we can help you. It's it's most regrettable that you've had to go through that much. But uh, I don't think it's any consolation to you, but it's, I think, computers that are uh, putting you in the situation you are in. But, uh, but uh, Ashley, I can order that that be removed co from collections, can I not? Yes, you can. We just need that in a journal entry. All right. Mr. Regeer, would you please, uh, I don't, I haven't heard from you. Do you have any objections to my, under these circumstances, removing it from collections? Uh, Your Honor, if that is the court's order. All right. Well, I, th I, I always have. <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's Jared Regeer for, I don't like it, but I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> trouble when they get sent to collections before they've even been found guilty and I know that's not something that happens at the local level it happens up at the state level and I don't understand that any more than Mr. Bala does but I am going to order that the case be removed from collections that's the first order now Mr. Bala how do you want to proceed on this charge of 97 miles per hour in a 75 do you want to plead not guilty and set it for trial by Zoom? Do you want to plead guilty, admitting it, and proceed with sentencing today, which would be a scheduled fine of, I believe, 123 plus 108 court costs? Is that right, Mr. Regeer? One moment, Your Honor. Of course, that's kind of catching you off guard because I think this was just put on the docket. Uh, or you can plead Mr. Bala no contest. Now that means you don't admit that you were speeding, but you don't want to deny it and take it to trial either. So those are, do you understand those three options or can I answer uh, any questions? Uh, Your Honor, I will, I will just plead no contest because if, if the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the favor you're doing me right now, if that favor was done like, uh, 
back in February, I was going to be able to pay it up because I told the lady that, hey, there's no need for me to go all the way to Kansas. I can just make my payments online or tell my wife to submit a payment. And, yeah, well, I was denied of all those. So that's the reason why we're here today. But uh, by that time, I was, the payments should have been done, like, a long time ago, Your Honor. So. Yeah, it's, it's most unfortunate. All right. So you want to plead no contest, neither admitting yeah. nor denying that you were traveling at the rate of 97 miles per hour in a 75 mile per hour zone. What did I mean? yeah, I'll, I'll, plead, I'll plead no contest, uh, Your Honor. Is anyone making you enter this plea today by any kind of threats or promises? No, ma'am. And you no, understand? Your Honor. You understand with this plea, you're giving up your right to trial and your right to appeal conviction. Uh, Your Honor, I will. I will. If the court can help me, uh, I can. I can make the payment, and I just don't want it to pop up on my driving's record. I don't know if the court can help me with that too. All right. Uh, it will. It will uh, show on your driving record as a conviction for speeding. Uh, that's done in Topeka, the Department of Revenue, Division of Vehicles, and I, I don't have any control over that. And it looks like you probably you were going too fast, according to the allegations, to have uh, received the diversion. So do you still want to proceed with the plea, knowing that it, it will go on your record? Uh, I will, I will change, I will, uh, let me, I will change it to uh, uh, not guilty, Your Honor. All right, not guilty, and you want to set this for a bench trial by Zoom? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Trial, and uh, Ashley, when is the next trial? November the 29th. November 29th at 1.30. Now, if something happens, are you still on deployment? No, Your Honor, I've been back. Uh, I've been back since June. When I came back, I called the court also to let them know I was back, and that's how they scheduled the time for the, uh, today's day. All right. So at this point, Ashley, the state hasn't done anything to suspend his license, have they, that you know of? Yes, they are also suspended. It is suspended? Yes, because he didn't pay it by the date that it was due on his ticket, so they suspend and send a collections at that point. All right, so we can take it out of collections. Is there anything we can do to get the suspension lifted from this end? No. Mr. Aguirre, is there anything you can or would do in that regard? Uh, Your Honor, my understanding is... Um, as an administrative process done through the Department of Revenue and um, is not necessarily within the bounds of this court. Of course, if the if Your Honor knows something differently, I'd be eager to hear anything on that. Okay. Mr. Bala? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, would, would you like for me to appoint an attorney to help you sort through all of this since you can't even legally drive right now without a license? Or your yes, license Your suspended? Yes, Your, yes, your Honor. Now, are you working at this time? Yes, Your Honor. My wife drives me uh, back and forth to work because I live 15 minutes away from uh, the military base in Texas, uh, Fort Vassals. Okay. Well, I'm going to appoint Darren Patterson, and then we'll figure out whether or not you'll be responsible for fees on that. Your Honor. Mr. Regeer. Um, I must respectfully um, remind the court that the only charge before the court is an infraction. Oh, I can't appoint Mr. Patterson on a suspension. They're on a speeding. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Yeah, I can't on a speeding. I was thinking of driving while Murder suspended. <laughs> but He's absolutely right, by the way, but it's hilarious. <laughs> um, you could give Mr. Patterson a call and see if there's anything he can do to help you with that suspension. 
or any other attorney of your choice. Darren Patterson takes our appointments and works with these uh, license issues all the time. And it's Darren yes, Patterson. Yes, I, yes Your Honor. Uh, your Honor, if I may, I, I recall the last time when I talked to uh, the clerk, I just don't remember her name, but she told me that uh, if I make the payment, which is the fines, uh, and then uh, this, uh, there will be a letter coming from the court that I have made my payment, and they will uh, uh, send a letter of reinstatement to the state of Texas, since that's my home of residence, to the state of Texas, and then the state of Texas will uh, uh, reinstate my license. Mm -hmm. and, and that can happen, and if you go ahead with your plea today, we can t do that, get that started. But with your bench trial, we'd have to wait and to see if you were found guilty or not guilty in November before we could get to that point. Oh, November is it's a long, long time for me, Your it Honor. Is a long, it's a long time. Yes, you're right. A long time without a license. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, is there a way the court can reduce my, my court costs so I can be able to make a payment through the clerk? Then we don't. I don't have to play not guilty and go away for November's trial. I can just make the payment. Well, I can give you some time to pay. It looks like the total with court costs is two thirty-one. I could give you time to pay. Um, yes, Your Honor. Would that? No, oh, but that wouldn't give your like get your license reinstated. Okay. Uh, all right, so you're saying that you can't afford to pay the, or you don't have the resources right now to pay the 231? Uh, as of now, I can't, I cannot make the payment of 231 right now, but I can at least make, have a payment because I have to pay the court costs and the, uh, the, 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 uh, the fines. Okay. And then by net, by the end of the, by the middle of, uh, August, no, August already in by the middle of uh, September, let's see, around September 15, I can call the court and make the balance payment. Okay. But I can be able to make a payment today, at least half. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Mr. Bilal, that on a traffic infraction like this, I could go up to a $500 fine plus court costs. But the scheduled fine that the state recommends is 123 or directs, but... Uh, I believe I could even waive that fine if I needed to. I can't tell you before your conviction what exactly I would do, but I will tell you that I believe I could waive that fine. That would still leave court costs of 108. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I would just play no context so I can have my I can make the payment and have my license reinstated. All right. So the state is alleging that on July 19, 2022, at 3.56 p.m., you were... Your Honor. Mr. Regeer? If he is intending to enter a no contest plea, um, I am prepared to lay a factual basis on that point. Um, before I do, I'm not sure if the court wants to address the issue of waiver. No, you said, uh, I should go on that so that's why I just... Um, you got, your, you got yeah. this one? This is so awkward. <laughs> you, don't want to feel that. you got your driver's license with you? Yes. Yeah. Regeer does not want to help this guy. Judge Webster does want to help this guy, but he is not making it easier for himself by talking over Regeer. I, I understand where I honestly understand where both Webster and and, and Regeer are and why they feel that way. They, they, they both are reasonable sentiments. Yes, Mr. Bilal. I'm I'm listening. I'm doing I'm doing inspection. That's why. Okay. Um, well, I just want to make sure I know that what he's pleading to. I, with it being an infraction, I don't believe he has to waive attorney. But, Mr. Bilal, are you wanting to represent yourself today on this traffic matter? Yes, Your Honor. You don't want to hire an attorney. No, Your Honor. All right. So I'll find he's waived his right to the attorney. And uh, the state's alleging that on July 19th, 2022, at 3.56 a.m., you were operating a motor vehicle on Interstate 35, uh, mile marker 72S in Butler County, Kansas, where the posted speed was 75, 
and your automobile was going 97. That is what you're pleading no contest to? Yes, Your Honor. Neither admitting nor denying, but standing mute without a trial. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Bregeer, you have basis? Uh, yes, Your Honor. The um, ticket does um, indicate all that July 19th, 2022 um, at, on I-35 at mile marker 72. Sure. My understanding is that is just on the northeast side of Elder Ray, northwest side of Elder Ray, forgive me, Your Honor. Okay. Certainly no. within the bounds of Butler County. Or car. The SOP occurred in the Dodge Magnum. Yeah. I can go and, with um, I can go get I can go The officer yeah. measured the defendant's speed at 97 in a 75 mile per hour zone. I got your radar. Right. Yeah. As well. I find, uh, Mr. Ballar, are you with the? Yeah, yeah. Are you on a traffic? Are you on a traffic stop right now? No, I was. Uh, I was talking to an inspection officer. Where is the inspection officer? It's in. He's in Waco. Uh, we came to do an inspection on the car that I, uh, my wife gonna be driving. Looks like you may have driven the vehicle there, but Mr. Regeer, uh did you get a chance to finish yeah, what you were wanting to say? You were getting interrupted there. As I was saying, Your Honor, um, the stop um, appears to involve the 2008 Dodge Magnum on the northwest side of El Dorado. I believe that's where mile marker 72 on I-35 is. Um, the officer measured the defendant's speed at 97 in a 75 mile per hour zone using stalker radar also pursuit to the ticket. Well, I find there is a factual basis to support the defendant's plea of no contest. Mr. Bala, I do find you guilty of speeding 97 in the 75. I will assess the uh, court costs of 108. And in this rare event, I will waive fines and when can you pay that 123 or that 108 now you're oh. muted when your honor i can make the payment today all right ashley do you know if he can make that online today no he will not be able to make a payment until we have a journal J judge waived his fines which is probably more than he deserves but i understand why uh, but y you will see. You will see where we're headed. <laughs> term collections. All right. Can we get that done as soon as possible, Mr. Regeer? I will put a note in your in the file on that point. Um, um, the, in this particular instance, I have not seen anything to suggest that the waiver of fines is appropriate. But if that is the court's order, of course, the journalist who rules it. Well, that will be the judge's orders. Very good, Your Honor. <laughs> All right. So, Mr. Bala, I'm going to give. I'm going to order that you pay it within thirty days. I enjoy all this way too much. Days. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. But don't be driving because you. It looks suspiciously like you're driving this morning without a license, and that becomes a B misdemeanor. Is that car moving? No, Your Honor. That's the car I'm sitting in. All right. I, it's a it's a it's a open it's a open field, and the inspection officer is inspecting other people's cars while I'm sitting in the in the car. Well, I took a lot of consideration under your circumstances because you were serving your country, and you didn't have any control over your deployment. And you've told me you had a lot of problems with trying to use pay phones and other places and so forth. So that's, I'm giving you consideration for, for all of this and the fact that your license is now suspended, you're trying to get it back, but don't be out there driving because then all of this has been for nothing. You'll get a class B misdemeanor. Yes, your honor. All right. So 30 days to pay. Do you want the website to pay it online? Yes, Your Honor. Once I can, once I'm able to pay online or pay by phone, I can do that payment, Your Honor. You can't pay by phone. It's pay KS Courts 
Quartz.com. A-K-S. Quartz, C-O-U. C-O-U-R-T dot C-O-M. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, dot com. All right. There's nothing further. We'll be in recess. Mr. McGear, before I let him go, is there anything else we need to do? Nothing from the state's perspective, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Mr. Bilal, you may go at this time. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. All right, we'll be, is there anyone down there at the Sally Point? Heck, it's a double rainbow. Hey, Cal, look at that. It's a double rainbow. Well, there you have it. That was, that was just too good. That was too good. J Judge, Judge Webster's ultimately a softie. She wanted to give this guy a break. He, he did have to pay costs. He did plead guilty to a well, no contest to it. You know, so he resolved the thing today, but then he made it so hard because he's clearly lying about driving and and he's obnoxious during the hearing. He's he's kind of a likable guy and kind of annoying at the same time. He couldn't focus on the hearing. If, if you're asking for a break, just at least be respectful and focus on the be present in the moment. She gave him the break anyway, but Regeer didn't like it. Part, part of me, part of me, really uh, understands where Vergeer's coming from, though. <laughs> I mean, there's really no good reason to waive his his thing, but he got a ticket. He pled guilty. No contest. It got resolved. Hopefully, hopefully, this guy gets his license reinstated before he gets popped again, because clearly he's driving around right now. I don't know. It was lots of fun. It was lots of fun. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I'll see you all soon.